Today on Sci Guys, Slowing Chemical Reactions with Liquid Nitrogen. Welcome to Sci Guys. I'm Ryan. And I'm Teresa. And today we're slowing chemical reactions using liquid nitrogen. Cold temperatures slow me down. You're not even cold. A chemical reaction is the process of turning one set of substances, known as the reactants, into another set, known as the products, through the forming or breaking of chemical bonds. The equipment you're going to need for this episode includes a Pyrex beaker or metal bowl. Don't use a normal glass container because it can't handle the shock of the cold temperatures. A variety of glow sticks. If you're using short ones like these, make sure you have a pair of tongs or a spoon to get them back out. And finally, you're going to need a large container of liquid nitrogen. We got this one from Prax Air, but search online for a local distributor. Because liquid nitrogen is riskier than most of our experiments, adult supervision is required. The equipment you're going to need are an apron or lab coat to protect from spills and splashes, liquid nitrogen certified cryo gloves, a full face shield, and a good thing to remember is just to treat the liquid nitrogen with the same precautions you would boiling water. With your safety equipment on, fill your beaker with liquid nitrogen. Next, we're going to activate our glow sticks by breaking them and then put them in the liquid nitrogen. Leave the glow stick in the liquid nitrogen for a few minutes. Keep an eye on it because the light from the glow stick will begin to dim and eventually it will stop glowing altogether. Let's try that one more time. This time we'll use a number of longer glow sticks and we'll turn the lights off so you can see the glow much better. In this example you can clearly see how the temperature change caused by the liquid nitrogen reduces the glow of the glow sticks and eventually stops the glow altogether. If we remove the glow sticks from the liquid nitrogen and place them on a warm counter, they'll eventually absorb the heat from the environment around them and begin to glow again. Let's look at this experiment a little closer. All substances are made up of molecules, and when two or more substances are mixed together, the molecules move around and bump into each other. If enough energy is added, the bonds between the molecules can be broken and new bonds created. When this happens, it's known as a chemical reaction. In our glow stick, the outer plastic tube contains diphenyl oxalate, and the glass vial inside the tube contains hydrogen peroxide. When the glass vial is broken and the two reactants are mixed together, a chemical reaction occurs. This chemical reaction creates two molecules of phenol and a molecule of peroxyacid ester. The peroxy acid spontaneously breaks down into a simpler molecule, which is carbon dioxide. This breakdown releases energy that excites the dye within the glow stick, producing light. The color of light produced depends on the dye. This process is known as chemiluminescence. When we place the glow stick into liquid nitrogen, energy in the form of heat is removed, cooling the glow stick. The problem with cooling a chemical reaction is that as the temperature drops, the reactant molecules slow down and don't collide as often. Because they don't collide as often, the rate at which new product molecules are created slows down as well, reducing the amount of energy released as light, causing the glow of our glow sticks to dim and eventually go dark. When the glow sticks are removed from the liquid nitrogen, the heat energy from the environment is transferred to the glow sticks, raising their temperature. This rise in temperature allows the molecules in our reaction to collide more often, releasing more energy and eventually returning the glow sticks to their bright glow. The reactants in this reaction will continue to bump into each other over and over, creating new molecules as products until the concentration of reactants has diminished. Do not heat the glow sticks beyond room temperature. The hotter the glow sticks get, the higher the chance they will explode, releasing the chemicals and potentially harming someone. That's it for slowing chemical reactions with liquid nitrogen. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know in the comments below and subscribe for future episodes. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you have any questions related to this episode or about science in general, let us know in the comments below or message us on Facebook and we'll try to help you as best possible. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Here at Sci Guys, we're always curious how experiments turn out. So if you do these experiments at home, share a video or photo of them with us on our Facebook or Google Plus page. But remember to always ask your parents permission before you share any photos or videos.